UKIP candidates and their supporters are a collection of clowns who shouldn't be allowed to set the political agenda. That's what the Conservative Cabinet Minister Ken Clark said this week in his typically understated way. And the leader of UKIP, Nigel Farage, responded in kind, Mr Clark is a member of an ossified elite. All of which suggests that the Tories are getting rattled by the threat posed by UKIP and that UKIP is under a lot of pressure with the local elections only two days away to show that a bit more than a here today gone tomorrow protest party. Mr Farage joins us. Good morning to you. Good morning. Bit more evidence for Ken Clark this morning. Front page of the Daily Mirror, one of your candidates giving a, a Nazi salute, a picture wow. of him inside, inside with a knife clenched between his teeth in front of a Union flag. I mean, what kind of people are these to be Yeah, it doesn't look very pretty, I agree with you. Um, and we have had, out of our 1,700 candidates, a handful that have embarrassed us, uh, mostly because they simply haven't told us the truth. We're the only party in British politics who actually forbid former members of the British National Party or extreme organisations from even becoming members of UKIP, let alone candidates. And in one or two cases, people haven't told us the truth, but I'm pleased to say it is only a handful. Uh, well, how do we know that? Uh, we know that because you haven't a vetted huge them, so amount, we can't know, can we? A huge amount of time and money has been spent um, on researching every single UKIP candidate standing in these elections. I, I would uh, speculate... Researching if, every single one? I would speculate that if the same degree of scrutiny was put to the Labour and Conservative Party, they would equally find uh, their own embarrassment. So how come they're not popping out of the woodwork like your lot? I mean, some of the things some of them have said <laughs> make your well, toes curl up. Well, actually, the Tory party sacked somebody last week who was a serving councillor for talking about coloured people coming into Sussex the week before that. He had, had been a councillor. He was already a councillor, had been for a long time, and he came to those views. Goodness knows why. That's very interesting to answer. But nonetheless, slightly different from having candidates. If we open the papers every other day and there's somebody representing UKIP with some, uh, UKIP with some very bizarre things to say indeed. Yeah, we have had a couple of very bizarre cases and we've had two people who were former BNP members who basically lied to us. You know, we have done what due diligence we can at branch level uh, if people seem to be very, very odd, we didn't accept them. Uh, but we have taken people on faith. You know, we don't have the resources to troll through absolutely everybody's social media sites. Ah. And, and, and that has led to one or two embarrassments. But I Well, look, I, hang on, though. If you, if you don't have the resources to check these people out properly, then you should, should have fewer of them, surely. I mean, you're trying to run before you can walk. Uh, no, the party's been through a huge period of growth. I mean, our membership is up uh, nearly 50% this calendar year. Um, and inevitably, we're going to have one or two teething problems. As I say, it is just a handful of embarrassments, and none of it takes away from the fact that UKIP is fighting a big national campaign, and we're making a real impact. All right, well, let's have a look at the policies on which you're fighting that campaign. And you've got a few little uh, problems there, haven't you? Your economic policy simply well, doesn't stack up, does it? I mean, it's really it, very it, funny. Last week, the Tories said we had an 80 billion black hole. This week, they say it's 120 billion. And no doubt by Thursday, they'll have played the Joker and doubled it up to 240. They haven't read our 2010 manifesto. Yes, we made spending commitments. Yes, we gave aspirations for where we'd like the country to be in years to come. But we also, in that manifesto, clearly spelled out £77 billion worth of cuts that needed to be made from public expenditure in this country. And they're deliberately, willfully twisting the figures, which is a bit rich, really, when they're in a £130 billion black hole this year with the real economy. All right, so well, let's cut to the chase. Then you have abandoned the flat rate tax, have you? That's gone. Nope. No, oh, it hasn't gone. No, it hasn't gone at all. Oh. What we have said is we are we are we are having a debate in in the party as to what the flat rat, uh, flat tax should be and whether it should be one tier well, or you two. You don't know tier, how much it should be, and that is a, an ongoing debate that will form part of our manifesto for the next general election. So, so a two tier flat tax then. I think it's quite possible, given that the tax it's code. It's not a flat Britain, tax in that case. Is given it? that the given that the tax code in Britain is now thirteen thousand pages long, and the most complex, bedeviling uh, series of documents in the Western world, the argument for mass simplification is very, very clear. And politically, we have to decide: do we have just one rate, or do we have another higher rate as well? And that's a normal internal debate that any party. Because I thought you'd settled on twenty-five pence in the pound. No, we certainly haven't. That no. is a policy proposal that was put to us right. by one of our MEPs at the Spring Conference. It is good, healthy and natural that parties should debate policy and that's exactly what we're doing. I can't dictate what the policy of UKIP is. It'll be the National Executive Committee that makes that decision. And, but can you tell me, give us a clue um, as to how much the um, tax cuts will add up to? 
Uh, no, because we have not formulated that policy. So it might be and, 90 billion or 200 billion, it might be. No, it's not going to be anything, anything of that magnitude. Which one? 90 it, billion? Is that, that no, it'll, be, it, it, it'll be tens of billions, not hundreds, It'll be of tens course. of billions. But I mean, right. just as, I mean, the Labour Party have no policy at all for the next election, at least we're engaged in a debate to try and get that policy right. Well, I suppose the difference of the Labour Party is they've got, um, <laughs> and you might say this plays against them, but they do have a track record. You yeah, don't. That's, that's your difficulty, isn't it? You haven't been in government, so you can effectively, at least this is the impression a lot of people get, you can effectively say pretty much what you like. We've nothing to test you against. Well, you given don't have the a mess record. we're in, <laughs> given what the last government well, did... Well, I've acknowledged that. <laughs> ..and what this coalition's <laughs> doing, that gives us a slight advantage. I, you know, the disadvantage UKIP has is we haven't done it before, and I agree with that, but the advantage UKIP has is we are not made up of people who are part of the career political class. You know, nearly all of us have actually had jobs in the real world, and that is a very marked contrast to what I see on the front benches at Westminster today. But what sort of country would it be if you, if your party was running it? I mean, the sort of things... The Times had an interesting uh, leader on this yesterday. You'll have read it, of course. It would be a Britain in which it would once again be permissible to smoke in pubs in which the armed forces would be restored to their former glory, in which there would be a grammar school in every town and schools would restore proper discipline. Are we getting there? I mean, is that, that all sounds pretty of, good to me, yes. You like I mean, that why, idea? Why, why, smoking why in pubs, that's OK. Why give up on the things that worked? And I would, I would pick up, if I can, on grammar schools, mm -hmm. the 7% of people that go to the private schools in this country are now dominating politics, the media and sport in a way they haven't done for 100 years. What is wrong with being a party that says we want bright kids from poor backgrounds to have the best opportunity? All right. uh, smoky banners save 40,000 lives, people reckon, but you'd uh, bring it, uh, you'd, you'd, uh, you'd uh, end it. Well, sensible countries like Germany brought in the smoking ban, realised how silly and completely illiberal it was, and now in northern Germany, pubs and restaurants have separate smoking rooms, which gives no offence to non-smokers and lets people get on with their right, lives. Right, so that the lives that us. have been saved and the number of people who've given up smoking because of the ban, that, that would all be just chucked out of the window. Well, there's a great danger, of course, with young people, uh, that if you ban things, in many ways you make them more attractive. Right, so, so, we are so, big enough... We are big enough and ugly enough to make our own decisions in our own lives. We don't need government right. e doing e it for e us. Even if it saves lives and stops kids smoking and all that kind of thing, the hell with it, you just get shot of it. Well, you could ban chip shops, you could ban donuts, you could do all sorts of things. Oh, so the same lives. sort of thing. Is it smoking and chip shops, same sort of thing? Uh, well, I think obesity actually is killing more people in Britain now than smoking is. What, what we're saying is it's up to people how they should live their lives, not the state. Right. So, in other words, we should be able to do pretty much what we like. You get rid of stuff like multiculturalism and inclusion and, and we, you know, the idea of a climate change, that would be slung in the dustbin as well, all that kind of thing. We chuck all that out. Yeah? Well, I think the climate change arguments um, uh, are going on, and there is at least now a proper debate. But what we're absolutely certain of in UKIP is that wind energy is not the solution to climate change, even even if there is a problem there in the first place. Yeah, I mean, isn't your problem that you're against an awful lot of things, you know, immigration, the European Union and Britain, and all that stuff, but, but we're not quite clear what you're for, are we? What you seem to be doing and what you seem to have done for a very long time now is kind of taught like, you know, the, 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 the taxi driver to the bloke in the back of the cab saying, I'll tell you what's wrong with this country, mate, and then you reel off <laughs> a whole list of things. Everybody says, yeah, right on. Well, what we're for is we're for an independent, self-confident, self-governing United Kingdom that believes in itself and changes its entire future course away from being obsessed with being part of Europe to actually linking out and forging new trade relationships and cultural relationships with the rest of the world. We are the modern, forward-looking party saying we want a global future for Britain in the 21st century, not to be tied to this completely outdated European model that is now making 75% of our lives. And if, and if you lives. heard anybody else saying the first part of that anyway, put aside the Europe bit, the first part of that, any other politicians say, you say, what a load of rhetoric, what a load of promises. Well, the point is, we cannot engage with the rest of the world, we cannot form those relationships, all the while we're part of the European Union, because membership of that club forbids us from right, doing so. Right, in that case, vote Tory and you'll get a referendum. Well, will you? You know, we've heard it all yes, before. Yes, he's I mean, promised, he's promised, he's promised. I know <laughs> over he has, and he over did again. before. He did before, it was called a cast-iron guarantee. So um, the Prime Minister's a liar, that. is he? He's telling us that in five years' time, if he wins the election, which looks pretty impossible, he will give us a referendum. I don't want to wait five years. The doors are opening on January the 1st next year to 29 million people from Romania and Bulgaria. If we're going to have a referendum on this, let's have it this year. Nigel Farage, many thanks. Thank you.